My name is Scott Patterson. I'm the Outside Avian Supervisor at the Suncoast Seabird Sanctuary. My name is Elizabeth Vreeland and I'm a wild bird rescuer. We were one of the first rehab facilities to successfully breed brown pelicans in captivity um, back in the 70s when DDT was um, taking a toll on the pelicans. The sanctuary was one of the first facilities to actually successfully breed brown pelicans. The goal of the Suncoast Seabird Sanctuary is to rescue, rehabilitate, and release um, native North American birds um, back out into the wild. A lot of the birds that um, we get in, you know, can be released. Um, we have a, a pretty high um, success rate. I believe it's in the 90 percentile. Uh, rescuing the seabirds is important because as we encroach upon um, the birds environment uh, we are responsible for a lot of the injuries that happen to those birds so in a sense it's our responsibility to take care of those birds. The seabirds are important to the ecosystem because they are environmental um, indicators on um, when we have polluted oceans and we start losing populations of certain birds and things like that there it's a way for the earth to tell us that something's not right. A lot of the seabirds are injured by fishing line and fishing hook. Um, a lot of people think they're doing a favor to the birds by feeding them at the piers, which ends up causing more problems than good. We are um, hanging out at the fish cleaning station on the fishing pier at the Skyway. Fishermen are cleaning their fish and um, usually they throw in the scraps in the water. Well, this poses a problem, number one, because there's no feeding of groups of pelicans law that was passed last year. And um, the pelicans become beggars and hang around fishing piers, waiting for hangouts, handouts, and losing their um, instinct to hunt. They just want to hang out. The other problem is that they are fed carcasses that are uh, way too big for them to digest. They can't just um, digest the large bones. So if they even get them down, usually they get stuck in their throat or the, the bones tear open the inside of their esophagus and the lining of their stomach. And so um, the body fluids are exposed into the cavity and it causes peritonitis and they die a slow, painful death. A lot of times the birds accidentally fly into the fishing line. Um, when people are fishing from the piers, they don't see the line as they're flying along and they will actually clip it with their wings and get entangled in the fishing line. Um, also, some birds do go for the bait at the end of at the end of the line and that causes problems as well because they'll end up swallowing the bait with the hook as well. I found a lot of the fishermen get very angry if you have to cut their hook and uh, you know some of these lures are very expensive and I see why you know uh, if they hooked five pelicans in a day they you know just lost 25 bucks you know or more. Pelican flying to the fisherman's line if their line if their pole wasn't secured and taking the whole pole over the edge that happens a lot so that's part of what I do is just tell them please secure your poles this may happen to you today this is how you handle it um, I'm sorry I have to cut your hook right now because we can't back this hook out of the bird because it'll tear his tendons and muscle and tissue so just as if it were hooked in your finger if the barbs in there you want to push it through until the barbs exposed, cut off the barb, and then back it out. For the seabirds that can't be rehabilitated, what we try to do is find homes for them in other zoological parks or here at the Suncoast Seabird Sanctuary. Um, sometimes the injuries are too severe for those birds to function properly, um, so euthanasia is also something that we have to do from time to time. What I found is by interacting with the fishermen, um, a lot of them want to do the right thing. A lot of them are out here doing the right thing. They're great sportsmen. Um, I've actually learned tips from them on how to, you know, unravel the birds. Um, but it's really important to have a good rapport with them because education is the most important thing out here. If there's no one providing the education and telling these people what to do when they encounter the situation that a bird flies into their line, um, and is hooked, you know, and is snapping at them. Um, if there's no one to tell them what to do, I mean, what do we expect them to do? You know, they're gonna cut the line, they're, they're gonna be afraid, the birds are gonna um, become more injured. And um, so what I'm doing out here is I'm talking with the fishermen, I'm um, giving them the tools they need. I, I pass out a flyer which um, tells them uh, how to unhook a bird if the bird, you know, flies into their line, how to, um, get them up onto the pier when they're 20 feet below, 
Um, it tells them where our crates are and just gives them some basic information. It also has our cell number on there, our mobile number, so that they can contact us at any time if they have any questions and need any help. They put a bird in the crate for admittance to the hospital. Um, environmental education and conservation, I believe, are both very important. Um, with education, um, people are more aware of what's going on in our environment. And conservation is very important because when we start to lose species, we cannot get those birds back. When a bird is extinct, that's it, it's done. People have been known to slam the birds on the concrete, you know, still attached to the fishing line. We're talking like pelicans. And um, to rip hooks out of their, you know, neck and leave huge holes. They've, you know, they've broken their bills off. They've, you know, cut them with knives. There was one that was nailed to a board out here a few years ago um, by the pouch. So. It's, um, there are a lot of disgusting things that happen. I just had a couple months ago a guy run over three of them. I still have to be able to reach those people. You know, I have to be able to turn them around somehow. I had one bird that was um, attached to a piling and the, the tide was coming in and his mouth was filling with water. It was just going over him and I could see his pouch was full of water and he couldn't pick his head up anymore. And he was, you know, being drugged down by the line. Um, I think, I, if I recall correctly, this bird actually had a fishing pole around him as well as being attached around the piling. So um, what I had to do in that case is just really be patient and learn a new way to throw my net and had to swing it um, underneath and, and after a couple times it actually dropped around him and I was able to scoop him up. So that one was the hardest to see. Um, physically and to, to visually watch it because you're just watching this bird struggle for his life and die, you know, possibly right in front of your eyes. And, and sometimes there's not much you can do about it. So the coolest thing about being out here is that you get to think out of the box and you get to create ways that you can help. And it's pretty, um, that's pretty exciting, even in the hardest moments. Mostly out here at the fishing piers, we rescue with a hoop net or a cast net which is lowered into the water or thrown over the birds in the water in order to give them a little bit of an elevator up onto the pier. This is my cast net with very light weights we use um, so we don't you know, injure the birds. Um, but the snaring technique is more for the longer leg birds. Um, we use it out in the field a lot um, with sandhill cranes and um, that's basically where you, you capture one of their legs um, from the ground and you're able to reel them in. There is a difference between feeding and baiting. We, um, when we have to use fish, we minimize ingestion from the bird. I wouldn't just normally come out here if I saw an injured pelican and start throwing them fish to you know, make him come close enough to my net. What I would do is I would show the fish, hold it by the tail, and a lot of the times that's all we have to do is just show it, toss it up in the air a couple times, smack it on the ground a little bit, Create, make it exciting for the birds because it gets their attention and then um, you know a lot of times we don't even lose a fish we're able to lure them close enough and grab them or throw a net over them and we save our fish and we don't, we're not feeding. Local people can help prevent accidents with seabirds by one not feeding them at the piers letting them find their own food um, secondly, they can help by discarding monofilament line into the proper receptacles, not throwing it out in the water where it's going to cause problems. If you're proactive and you're out there educating the public, you can prevent a lot of these injuries and you can get to the injuries quickly so that the birds aren't suffering and going downhill until someone actually finds them and, and turns them into the hospital. We rely a lot on uh, volunteer help, so uh, if you'd like to volunteer, you can always check out our homepage on the internet, www.seabirdsanctuary.com, and you can find information on there about how to volunteer.